And that's really what it's all about for me, anyway. Uh, I just came here because I believe that no matter who we are, uh, what we believe in, where we came from, where we're going, we're all just brothers and sisters in this great experiment called civilization. Eh? And uh, I'm here to show everybody that it's not about hitting the other guy while he's down, like making fun of a Maple Leafs fan. It's about helping each other out and sharing in the good fortune. Like all-time leading NHL assist leader, Wayne Gretzky. Chris said that. Honestly. Hmm. So naive. Well, of course, we would all love to live in Chris's world, wouldn't we, then? Just as I would love to wake up each morning and ride a unicorn to my job at Leprechaun Social Services. They truly are a community in desperate need of assistance, and we cannot ignore the troubling reality that we have all been complicit in their demise. Yes, who wouldn't want a fulfilling job and a creature of myth as a means of transport? Sadly, there is no such thing as a unicorn, just as there is no such thing as a leprechaun, and the world will never be the utopian dreamscape that Chris envisions. I promise that over the coming weeks and months, I shall do my best to show Chris that his admittedly admirable goals will only ever be achieved through a series of difficult compromises. Well, I know we all subscribe to different political philosophies. I mean, that's why we're all here, right? Uh... But, you know, that doesn't mean that we can't come together to form a really very cohesive unit. You know, I want to form a team with my co-stars here. I really want us to be better than the other reality show casts out there. You know, like down the street, there are these guys. There, There's this show where they pair up like a fat guy and a skinny guy and they can only eat food that they prepare for each other. And it's just like a ridiculous premise for a show. I mean, who would ever watch that, first off? And then on top of it, they're just a bunch of assholes anyway. And uh, so, you know, I'm kind of hoping that we can really rally the troops and maybe I can get the other guys uh, to, to back me up and we can go kick their asses. Oh, no, no, no. He wants to fight the cast of Calorie Counting co-stars? Why would he do that? I mean, it's one thing if our way of life is being threatened or someone's, you know, messing with our property, but come on, picking a fight with a reality show cast just because their show is kind of annoying? You know, that's just ridiculous. That has nothing to do with defense. That's just pure aggression. And, you know, the thing is, they're actually starting to make some real progress. They're kind of learning how to meet in the middle. And I admire that. Well, the first thing with which we have been tasked is coming up with a project for the house. Personally, I am planning on hosting a series of debates with a delightful twist. You see, we will prepare for these debates as normal, but at the very last moment, I will have everybody switch so that they are attacking the very position they were planning on advocating. Delightful. Now, you see, I believe this will lead to a better world through increased understanding and compromise as we are forced to see the world through the eyes of our opponents. Peter stood me up in front of everybody and he made me argue that hockey is not the greatest game ever created. How could he do this to me? I can never go home. Well, for my project, I uh, kind of took a look around, and uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but some of the other guys, they could really stand to get in shape. And so I decided that as a good team-building exercise, I would host a four-on-four -four basketball tournament in this city park over, over across the street. And uh, so I'm going to make sure that the guys get out every day and practice, and uh, that we really form a team, and uh, hopefully we'll take the title. Uh, I am a little worried, though, because, you know, we, we are a little bit short, and uh, I'm not sure if Chris has ever even heard of basketball or seen a basketball game be played, or really, I don't know if Chris knows about any sports other than hockey. 
Well, to me, music is the universal language. And uh, is there really a better way to express that than by forming a rock and roll combo with your buddies and melting some faces? I don't think so. I don't think so. Oh, I can't play anything. I mean, it's, it's really bad. You know, I get where Chris is coming from with the music and the togetherness and all that stuff. But the thing is, bands form because musicians want to play with each other. We're not musicians. We don't know how to play, necessarily. And, you know, bands don't just form against one dude with a really hyper-inflated sense of togetherness. We're truly awful. Well, truthfully, I am a classically trained pianist. For God's sake, I've played for the Queen. I just have been pretending that I'm completely musically illiterate because, truth be told, Chris's musical selections have little musical merit to speak of. Look, I don't really enjoy Chris's band too much myself either, you know? I'm not really a musician. But it's Chris's deal, it's his project, he really thinks that it'll help us transcend our differences, and who are we to say differently? You know, none of us have figured out a way to live in perfect harmony, so who are we to judge Chris? That's all I'm saying. And Peter, I can't believe he's being such a snob about it, like seriously. And you know, I, th I think there's something kind of suspicious about his accent. I just, I just don't think it's real. Calling into question the authenticity of me accent, are they? How dare they? Who do they think they are? Crikey, it's hotter than the outback in here, mate. Uh, well, you know, I just really like things that grow, you know, man. And uh, there's this fucking buckthorn. It's this shitty invasive species and it's just everywhere, so I'm kind of organizing a cleanup with the other guys and we're trying to whip this place into shape. I simply cannot reconcile cutting trees down of any sort while we're in the midst of an ecological disaster perpetrated by deforestation. We are diminishing the Earth's ability to capture carbon, at the same time we are building more roads and more cars and more coal-fired power plants. We simply cannot spare any trees. The earth needs every leaf it can get. Well, now I suggested that we compromise and that we plant some native species back there in place of the, the buckthorn that we remove. That way, Peter is satisfied that, you know, his carbon capture, greenhouse gas issue is addressed. When he still has to do his project, and who knows, maybe we'll get a maple tree back there, eh? You know, I never really cared that much about plants and stuff, but then Lenny started telling me about this buckthorn and how it's this invasive species from the outside and it comes to our land and it grows and it kills our native plants. And this, this will not stand. Fuck buckthorn. Well, don't get me wrong, I mean, I'm glad that Reggie's backing me up on the buckthorn issue. It's just that it sort of seems like he was just looking for a fight, even if it's with a tree. Well, now that we've taken out almost all of the buckthorn, and we're having trouble getting native species to sprout, the truth as to why Lenny wanted the buckthorn gone in the first place has emerged. He wanted a space to hang his hammock. Well, it seems like things are getting a little bit tense around here. So what I've done is I've called a house meeting for tonight so that we can really try to defeat our differences before they defeat us. Alright then, well I guess I'll start off. Peter, you're not even British, are you? Well, truth be told, my persona is one that I have cultivated carefully over many years in order to gain credibility. Who sounds more intelligent than someone with a British accent, after all? If I'm to succeed in teaching people that the only way to solve the problems we are faced with is to understand all the subtleties and nuances of everybody's perspective, well then, I need to look and sound the part then, don't I?
Well, sure, but you put a Sharks jersey on an Oilers fan, you don't make him into a Sharks fan. You just end up with an Oilers fan who's pissed off because he's wearing a Sharks jersey. You know what I mean? Nobody understands what the hell your hockey analogies mean, Chris. Seriously. But I think I get your point. We all just need to be ourselves. And I'm all about being myself. But we're part of something bigger, whether we like it or not. Alright? Now, Lenny, I understand that your individuality is very important to you. But you have to understand that sometimes people confuse individuality and individualism, and that leads to some serious problems. A Republican lecturing on individualism. My goodness, Chris, I thought that was our territory. Then again, I don't believe in territory. In either case, I welcome you to the fight against individualism. Right. Well, gents, your point has been received. I guess that in my quest for knowledge, I have turned into a bit of a... Uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Phony douchebag? Well, I was gonna say philosopher hipster, but phony douchebag works too. Alright, 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 fellas. Now, besides Peter turning out not to be who he said he was, are we having any other problems here at the house? You guys never want to exert your dominance as the best reality show cast. You never back me up in fights. That's because I don't give a shit about the things that piss you off, and I don't know how far you'd have to get to get these guys to raise their fists. Seriously, watch this. Chris, Peter, Tell me what the hardest thing about growing up was, considering your mothers are both whores. Well now, Lenny, that just hurts my feelings. You know, I respect your right to do and say as you please, but that was very hurtful what you just said. And you don't know a thing about my mother. Agreed. And I think that this situation calls for immediate discussion. Chris, I think that over time, if we gather enough evidence, we shall be able to convince Lenny that our mothers are not, in fact, whores. What is wrong with you guys? Can't you see that Lenny is just being an asshole because he thinks it's funny? Just say, hey dude, quit being a dick, and if he doesn't stop, then you kick his ass. It's really not that hard. Don't worry guys, it's Reggie's mom who's the real whore. I say, that was remarkably effective. Perhaps you're right that there's a danger of overthinking things, just as there's a danger in underthinking them and making hasty decisions. Guys, I've received word that this show's been cancelled. Apparently people aren't interested in a show about ethics and political philosophy. Go figure. So, this is the last scene we're shooting, and then that's a wrap. Wow. I guess that's it, guys. Can't believe it's over already. Yeah, but, you know, didn't we already kind of figure out the point to all this anyway? I mean, really, I know that my personal freedoms have certain rights, and as long as I'm not an asshole, I can get along with others just fine. And I've learned that while it is often advantageous to explore every aspect of a particular issue, it is possible to get bogged down to the point where you can never make a decision in the first place. Nuance has its place, but it must be kept in check. Well, I suppose it's important for me to recognize that the world is a very interconnected place, and that, you know, the well-being of others is very important to my own well-being. The better other people are doing, the better that I'm doing. Well, I see now that I, I can't be so focused on the way that I wish the world was. I need to be a little bit more uh, in touch with reality and, you know, I need to uh, see the world for how it is in order to make the changes in it that I need in order for it to become the world that I want. And, uh, it should be possible for me to be pragmatic without compromising my values. Well, I guess that's about it. I mean, looks like as long as people are reasonably well informed, seek balance in their lives, and aren't selfish assholes, everyone can pretty much coexist peacefully. Maybe when this airs, people will see how we manage to deal with our differences, and everyone will just take it down a notch and solve their problems. Not bloody likely.